When most of Washington is barely able to keep the government functioning, should politicians be getting their hands into scientific research? If it's up to the Republicans on the House Science Committee, led by Congressman Lamar Smith of Texas, they would do just that. The Huffington Post obtained a draft of uh, the congressman's legislation last Thursday. What exactly does he want? He, he wants to require the director of the National Science Foundation, which is in charge of distributing grants to various scientists, to verify uh, that, that any grant that's given is going to cutting edge research, to grant something that is groundbreaking, um, and that, that solves a major problem that is of the utmost importance uh, you know, to, to the United States. Uh, and a, a lot of people in the scientific community are a little bit concerned because if of course, if you could know ahead of time that a, you know, a project was going to be groundbreaking or, uh, or solve a major problem, you wouldn't have to go and carry out the scientific experiment. You would just go ahead and solve the problem. It seems to be a, an anti-scientific politicization of, of the scientific process. Right. And Representative Eddie Bernice Johnson of Texas agrees with you. She slammed this request, saying across the line of putting politics ahead of science, here's what she said. Your letter marks the beginning of an investigative effort, the implications of which are profound. This is the first step on a path that would destroy the merit-based review process at NSF and intrudes political pressure into what is widely regarded as the most effective and creative process for awarding research funds in the world. So is there a chance of this actually going anywhere, Zach? I mean, ordinarily, when you see something that's kind of just out there crazy like this, you, you say, no, there's no chance it'll go anywhere. But we just actually had Congress push through a ban on political science research, some types of political science research that are funded by the federal government as part of a, of a continuing resolution bill. It's one of these sort of short term budget bills that Congress passes when they can't do a real budget. Um, so it is possible that if this actually cleared the House and, and somehow made it through the Senate on, attached to some other piece of legislation, that this could become law. Zach, you worked on the House subcommittee on uh, creationism. Uh, <laughs> what's the worst case scenario here if something like this would have passed? What's the end game? Because I'm not sure people are sufficiently panicked by this. If I ever change jobs, Mark, you have got to write my recipe for me. It would be completely false. Uh, you know, I think it's interesting that, uh, that, that just earlier this year, uh, we had a whole bunch of Republicans, Bobby Jindal, Karl Rove, saying it's time for the Republican Party to stop being the stupid party. And it seems to me it's very unwise for for the Republican Party to then go and, and do all these things that are anti-science, that are against scientific research. It just it just doesn't seem like the branding is good. Even if somebody like Lamar Smith says, look, I'm just trying to provide you know basic oversight for how taxpayer dollars are sent. If you look at the sort of things he complains about in his letter to the National Science Foundation director, he's upset with research into international criminal courts and their relationship with global justice. Mm -hmm. Why is that problematic? It's not obvious that that thing is, is something that that is, you know, difficult on its face, unscientific or something. It seems like maybe Lamar Smith doesn't like it and wants to cut off funding to it.